predict the effect of a change in temperature on the spontaneity of a reaction. Well, nature likes its reactions hot and messy. A hot and messy reaction will always be spontaneous. By hot, I mean exothermic, delta H is negative. And messy, I mean the entropy is increasing, delta S is positive. So hot and messy reactions will always be spontaneous, delta G will be negative. Cold and tidy, these reactions will never happen. Cold is endothermic, delta H is plus. And tidy, well delta S, the entropy change, is negative. These reactions will never happen. So, to recap, hot and messy always happens. I know this sounds weird, but if I remember it like this, I find the delta G equation easier to understand. Hot and messy always happens. Delta G is negative, spontaneous. Cold and tidy, that never happens. Cold is endothermic, and tidy, well, delta S is going to be negative, entropy is decreasing. Delta G is positive, it's non-spontaneous. So the interesting part is, what if it's a different combination of those two? For example, if it's hot and tidy, does it happen? Or if it's cold and messy, does the reaction happen? Well, those reactions are temperature dependent, and that's what this unit's about. Well, for this reaction that's used to make iron, delta G, when it's plus, it's non-spontaneous, that's always the case, and negative delta G is spontaneous. Now, looking at the equation, you couldn't tell that delta H is plus. I'd have to tell you that. But delta S is plus. Entropy is increasing. Yeah, you could work that out because a gas is produced from solids. So don't forget, delta H is plus. It's endothermic, or it's cold. And delta S is plus. It's messy. Ah, so this is temperature dependent, this one. Cold and messy. So delta G depends on the temperature. So allow me to sketch in the graph as temperature increases the effect on delta G. Well, it should be clear that uh, as temperature goes up, delta G goes down. And at this point here, well, that's important. There, delta G is zero. And it's about to become spontaneous at delta G equals zero. It's also equilibrium, but the IB doesn't need you to know that. That's 840 Kelvin. So that's the magic temperature. 840 Kelvin, this reaction will actually start. And as you increase the temperature further, delta G becomes more and more negative. So let's look at this in a more traditional IB way, using the delta G equation. Now, delta H is plus, it's endothermic, Temperature is always positive, it's Kelvin, and delta S was also plus. Now we're changing delta T, or changing T, excuse me. So as temperature increases, that's going to make delta G decrease. For the second example, uh, you can look at the equation, and you probably couldn't tell that delta H is negative. This is an exothermic reaction. So it gets hot. But delta S, you can see a gas turns to a liquid. Oh, and so that's disorder is decreasing. Entropy is decreasing. I'm getting rid of the high entropy gas turning into a liquid. So that's hot and tidy. So again, that's one of these temperature dependent ones. Allow me to draw the line in. So as temperature increases, delta G increases. And it's going to hit zero, and that's the borderline between spontaneity and non-spontaneous. And that's at 1710 Kelvin for this particular reaction. So above that temperature, delta G becomes plus. The reaction isn't spontaneous. It stops. So I'm thinking that at that temperature, maybe the product starts to break apart at these high temperatures. I'm not really sure, and you don't really need to know. Let's go back to delta G. Now, delta H was a negative, it's exothermic. Temperature's always positive, delta S was negative. So as we increase the temperature, delta G becomes greater. Spontaneity decreases.